Hi everyone, it's Jim from Pure Wave Audio, and today we're going to be talking about recording vocals or guitar amps in a closet at your house. So you have a closet in your house and you're thinking about actually recording vocals, uh, whether it's singing or just voiceover or putting a guitar amp in your closet and, you know, because it's supposedly good acoustics. And so we're going to talk about the pros and cons. So some of the pros would be, well, I believe it's deadened and so there's not going to be a lot of echo and we could put our voice in there and it should be nice. Now that could be true depending on how much clothes and stuff you have hanging in that closet. If the closet is empty, then it's going to be real echoey and no different than going into a bathroom, which, as you well know, is very reverby. Now, people talk about how their voice sounds great in the shower, and that's because they're hearing something outside of themselves. But honestly, the acoustics are horrible, and it's very a lot of direct delays, and it's just very echoey. And when you hear something... When you're, when you're a third person outside of that and you hear something in a bathroom, it sounds horrible. And uh, you don't want to record in a bathroom. So if you don't have any clothes in the closet, well, obviously it's going to be like that. Now, if you put a guitar amp or vocals into a small cavity, this is where we really get into trouble. You're closing the volume of the room down because most closets are really small. And that creates resonant frequencies in the lower mid-range. And what happens is you might go in there and have a nice dead room, but you're noticing that when you play back, all you hear is kind of stuff on your vocals. You sound too meaty and almost muddy in the lower mid range. Well, that's not a function of how much clothes or absorption you have in the room. That's a function of the actual dimensions of the room. And so it's working against you. One of the other issues that you could have is that you have so much absorption because you have, let's say, 300 shirts and a 6x4 closet that you're actually ripping all the high end off your vocals. And when you're singing or talking into a microphone, any kind of nuance of movement, you'll hear a difference in the high end presence of that voice because it's just getting ripped away. Where if you have a more balanced and actually treated room, you'll be able to move a little bit, even if it's a cardioid mic, you'll be able to move a little bit and that high-end presence will be there and there's a little bit of forgiveness. All right, I just locked myself in a closet and if you could hear it, even though there's clothes and stuff like that in here, it's just too small. You could hear the direct reflections coming back and it sounds really tight. And those direct reflections is what actually tells your body how big a room is. And so you could definitely hear it even though this is full of jackets and all sorts of stuff in here. You could also look for frequencies by going and you could hear right in that area it gets louder that's your resonant frequency of this room so now i'm in a different closet which is about three times bigger than the last one and you can see i'm stuffed with clothes and hold on a second red leather pants you know, I am a rock star in my other life. Anyways, back to the story. As you could hear in here, since there is so much wall space and stuff, it's actually more direct reflections in here. You would think with more clothes, it would close it down. But now that it's a bigger space, we're still having too many direct reflections. Hey, hold on a second. And let's do the test. Ooh. Right in those lower frequencies. Might be hard to hear on camera, but... There is a little resonance going on. Not as bad, but the direct reflections are actually worse than the resonant frequency in here. Why is that? As the room gets bigger, those resonant frequencies disappear. Kind of recapping, you could remove too much high end out of the situation, or you're getting room mode buildup in the lower mids, no matter how much absorption you have in that room. And of course, on guitar amps, that would sound horrible. 
Uh, very, very boomy uh, in the lower mid range, no definition in the top end. Um, so sometimes recording in the closet is not the right thing to do. Now, if you have the ability to use the regular bedroom that you're in or whatever to record, it'd be a lot better to take a few uh, boom microphone stands, make a T out of them with the boom sideways and you got the pull down and throw a comforter or a blanket over it and then you could actually move them around and create a deader environment. But you're not sucking everything out of the environment. You're just kind of closing it in so you're not getting reflection from the walls back into that microphone. That would be a way better approach to actually trying to get a really good recording. So, of course, the best is, you know, buying absorption products from either like Oral-X or Vacoustics, which is something that we sell, uh, and actually having a room tuned by you know sending in the CAD drawings or you know getting the dimensions of the room and actually putting it through a computer process to analyze what you actually need in that room and that's something we offer too but I always want to give you tips and tricks and and ways to kind of do some you know do-it-yourself things on your own just kind of help you out when you're in a pinch and you need to do something and you think you're doing the right thing but you're actually not check out more things at purewaveaudio.com Till next time, have a great day. Building on top of the first course, the Studio Edge Pro audio recording series called Studio Concepts, Gear, and the Physics of Sound, Jim Pavet's next course, Planning a Studio, demystifies the planning process and teaches you how to get your studio designed and built. You see how to define your goals, plan your budget, and zero in on your musical philosophy so that your new studio will be in sync with your vision. It will also teach you about acoustics, including absorption, diffusion, NRC ratings, and room modes. Once you have these in place, the Constructing and Fine-Tuning Your Studio course teaches you how to construct your studio, including floating floors, walls, and ceilings, and how to balance your acoustic treatment to get proper sounding rooms. Power, grounding, and HVAC systems are also discussed. A guest appearance from renowned acoustician Gavin Haverstick discusses the final results of a control room tuning and why having your rooms tuned is important. In the case study Home Studio Edition course, you get to join Jim Pavette as he consults with the owner and the construction team as they all work together to build a Home Studio Edition. Real interviews and consulting with the contractor and owner bring all the theory to life and reveal some trials and tribulations of building a studio. This five-star rated three-pack course is a necessity to having a properly built studio. Get it now at thestudioedge.com.